Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this uh, city dialogue on mobility measures in response to COVID-19 organized by EuroCities. This is uh, one uh, more of a series of city dialogues that we have been organizing and we will continue organizing uh, to our experts uh, in the different European cities. Today, we are connecting several European cities. We receive more than uh, 70 uh, registrations from uh, 46 different cities. We are connecting north and south, east and west. And in the next uh, one hour and a half, we will speak with uh, Madrid, Budapest, Milan, Vienna, and of course, uh, all of you, uh, all the colleagues from uh, different European cities, you are also invited uh, to take the floor and to exchange your views, uh, ask your questions in this uh, city uh, dialogue. But also together with us this afternoon is the whole Eurocities mobility team. We are eight people uh, working here in Brussels these days, working from home, like you. We have different responsibilities, we manage different projects, but we are always available, even if we are working from home, we are always available uh, to um, address your questions. Uh, you have a, a question, you need something, just uh, send us an email or give us a call. Uh, we are all yours. And um, more specifically, uh, this afternoon, uh, there will be uh, two people uh, speaking uh, in this uh, city dialogue. It will be myself, my name is Juan, and I will be uh, the moderator, I will be your host uh, this afternoon. And together with me is my colleague, uh, Ariana. Ariana, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Juan, and good afternoon, everyone. Can you please uh, tell us what is going to be your role this afternoon? Yes, as you probably saw, I am uh, in charge of the conversation box on the left, mm -hmm. and I kindly ask you to use it just as a question box. So if you have questions during uh, the dialogue, please post them there, and this I will, a, I will collect rule. them. Yes, please use it only uh, as, a, as a question box so that we don't have a parallel chat, but uh, uh, raise your question and I will either uh, give you the floor or um, ask the question to the speaker okay. myself. I, I, I agree with you. Um, we all uh, will uh, follow this golden rule. We are going to use the chat box only for questions. Perfect, Ariana. Uh, anything else from your side, uh, technically speaking? Yes, uh, we are currently recording the um, City Dialogue so that we can share it also with the members that were not able to join us today. So uh, be, just be aware of this and that uh, we will be able to share the, the content afterwards. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Ariana. We are going to start then our city dialogue. Actually, when we were preparing this uh, this online uh, event, this online meeting, uh, the first question was, what is a dialogue? So we pick up a dictionary and we look for a definition. Uh, dialogue is a conversation between two or more people. Well, this afternoon here we are much more than two people, but still we are going to have a, a proper dialogue. We are going to exchange uh, each other our ideas and our solutions. And uh, in a conversation, in a dialogue, there are plenty of questions. And uh, Ariana has already one question for you. Yes, indeed. So I would like to uh, ask you to please answer the poll that you can see on the screen. Uh, and the question is, how restricted are movements in your city at the moment? Uh, I will read the answer for you. Only essential journeys are allowed with strict enforcement and checkpoints. Only essential journeys are allowed, but physical activity in open spaces for leisure is allowed. Different shops are open, not only supermarket. People are encouraged to stay home, but can visit shops. None of the above or other. We okay, can we see... Answer coming. We so, can wait maybe a few more seconds for people to test the, the poll. We will ask you several times to, to use this tool during the city dialogue. So it's nice to test it now to get familiarized with the, with the live poll tool because we are going to use it uh, during the next uh, half an hour a couple of times more. And we can see already there is a, the second option is the most popular, the most uh, um, answer, right? Only essential journeys are allowed, but physical activity in open spaces for leisure is allowed. So, Ariana, this is very useful for us, right? Yes, indeed, especially for our discussion today. But let's go on. 
Yeah, indeed. So thanks for your answers. Uh, so now we know more or less um, the different uh, situation in the different cities, a bit more in, in general. We are going to start this uh, city dialogue, but uh, we are going to divide it, the city dialogue, in uh, three uh, different parts. Uh, it will be, we will start with public transport, as you can see already in the screen. It was the first uh, uh, sector affected by this uh, health uh, crisis. Then uh, we will continue in a second part uh, with um, active mobility, walking and uh, cycling. And then uh, in a third uh, part uh, of the dialogue, we will uh, address the issue of uh, urban vehicle access uh, regulation, uh, restriction, sorry, UVARS, and uh, share mobility. So we will start uh, talking, as I said, uh, about uh, public transport. Don't worry if we are not able to cover all the aspects, all the issues during this uh, next uh, hour uh, and a bit more than an hour, uh, because there is a lot of things to discuss and we will have all the opportunities uh, to uh, address all the issues uh, related to urban mobility. And to start uh, with, we are going to travel to Madrid. Uh, there is uh, Lola Ortiz, is Planning and Mobility Infrastructure Director General of uh, Madrid. Good afternoon, Lola. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Uh, hello, Juan. Hello, everybody. Hello, Arian. Uh, I would like to... Very much. Sorry. Thank you Thanks. very much for inviting me to, to, to be here. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Very appreciated. I would like to ask you, um, um, in your responsibilities, uh, what uh, were the latest... Uh, mobility measures that you implemented this last week? Yes, during the last week uh, we implemented several measures. The first one was uh, to, to a temporary suspension of the, the regulated uh, skin parking area in all the city in Madrid. Also, we, uh, we, um, we offer for, to the, for all the, the health sanitary people uh, to use all the, the parking area in Madrid uh, mm -hmm. for free. Uh, not only the, the the parking and also the sun uh, sun lanes in the in the streets, and we have reserved only for for health for, for healthy people, and and also uh, we we and we we have been offered more than uh, 1,800 uh, parking area parking spaces, mm -hmm. and and also. Uh, uh, we, so we park, have, parking, uh, parking policies were very important at the beginning, I guess. Was one of the first things you yes, addressed? Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, people from the hospital had to to go to to the to the hospital by public transport, and to avoid that, and, and also to uh, make more comfortable the mm. work they we offer all the parking areas near the and hospital for the sanitary people. So you are talking about people. you are talking about workers of hospitals and, uh, and also patients both. Uh, more for 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 workers, yes. Okay, okay, yes, perfect. Yes. Any yes. other measures that you implemented? Uh... Uh, yes, uh, yes. I, I, well, I was talking about the um, the the, suspend, the temporary suspension of the regulated skin uh, parking area in the city, also. Mm -hmm. And also, we uh, close uh, the busy mat. Now today we have uh, reopened this morning. But at the beginning, we have to close all the busy map before we 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 can clean and prepare. Busy map is is the shared bikes of Madrid, right? It's the shared bike of Madrid, yes, yes, and and also we have to take out all the scooters that we have in, on the streets. Mm -hmm. um, yes, um, this is the most important things, and also of, of course uh, now uh, I think uh, Sergio is going to to tell you how. We have uh, the measure that we have implemented in the in the buses in the public buses in, in Madrid. Okay, we will discuss later with uh, Sergio and with other colleagues from other cities. Thank you very much, Lola, for for uh, telling us uh, what is happening in Madrid uh, currently. Very useful. Uh, I think you will stay with us still for a few minutes more, right? Okay. Yes. Nice. Thank you very much, Lola. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, as, I, as Lola mentioned, we are going to stay in Madrid for the moment uh, to discuss more about public transport and the different measures, but also we are going to connect Madrid with, with uh, Budapest. So Sergio Fernandez from the Municipal Transport Company in Madrid. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes, Sergio. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes to everyone. And also Mate Lenard from the Public Transport Company in Budapest. Uh, Jona Pot, good afternoon, Mate. Hello, hello, good afternoon. 
So may I ask you, uh, the two of you, uh, maybe I will start with you, uh, Sergio, uh, if you can tell me in 30 seconds, I mean, these last weeks, everything is changing every day. We all know, right? In every European city, it's not a surprise. But uh, can you please tell me in 30 seconds the last measures implemented uh, by the uh, public transport company uh, in Madrid? Okay, um, well, in 30 seconds. Um, it's a challenge. <laughs> We have, uh, uh, firstly, uh, in cooperation and following the indications of the Regional Transport Authority, we have adapted our service. That means uh, removing some bus lanes, uh, bus lines, uh, adapting the, the frequency and timetables of others, and creating some others from scratch uh, to cope with the new demand, especially linking hospitals, emergency centers, and, and other facilities around the city. Uh, and uh, joining with all that, uh, a huge increase in all the cleaning and disinfection activities um, and uh, also enforcing a lot of uh, communication both internal, internally and externally. Um, we have uh, drafted, well not drafted because we have uh, developed uh, a mm -hmm. specific protocol uh, to, fight, to fight against the coronavirus outbreak. That means uh, creating a coordination committee uh, plus um, uh, different measures uh, that uh, covers both the internal operations of the company, um, the bus service, and also the activity of our providers and suppliers. Mm -hmm. Well, very, very well done in, uh, yeah, in 30 seconds. So I will ask the same question to uh, Mate in Budapest. If you can tell me the latest development uh, in the measures implemented uh, by BKK, the public transport company in, uh, in Budapest, Mate. Yes, uh, in Budapest we also have a modified timetable to fit the transport demand and uh, we are cleaning the uh, public transport vehicles regularly uh, just to make everything safe. And also we separated the drivers of the uh, buses so you cannot use the first two uh, rows in the buses. And also we have a, a communication campaign to uh, let the uh, passengers know how to use uh, the, uh, the vehicles in these times and, and uh, what to pay attention to uh, now. And uh, in the, uh, from next week on, uh, people can only use uh, public transport vehicles in masks or covering their faces. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's more or less, I guess, the same situation in every European city. Uh, let me remind our audience that if you have any questions while you are uh, following this dialogue with Sergio, with Mate, uh, you can just uh, drop a line, uh, write your question in the, in the chat box, and Ariana will collect it for later. Um, for later, I mean uh, during this dialogue. We are not going to ask all the questions at the end. They will it's not going to be a dedicated moment at the very end of the dialogue. It's, uh, it's rather to be a proper the moment to ask the question is going to be now, right after we have this uh, chat uh, with, uh, with Sergio um, and Mate. Um, I was um, having something in mind, have something, a question. Uh, um, it's, it's not going to be, uh, I'm sure it wasn't easy uh, to implement such a big amount of measures last minute, um, especially adapting the, the, the services uh, to the new demand. Um, I was wondering, Sergio, um, was it challenging to collect the data? Was the system already prepared to collect uh, real-time data to adapt the, the, the service to demand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yes, for, for to, to give you an idea, uh, on a daily basis and, and normal conditions in Madrid, we transport around 1.6 million people per day just on the urban buses. And in the peak of this uh, lockdown, uh, we were moving roughly 100,000. So the, the reduction in, in, in passengers was more than 90%. Um, there was a day, I think it was uh, last, uh, not last Sunday, the, the Sunday before, that number went down even farther to 35,000 passengers a day, which is basically nothing. Uh, so initially, uh, we maintained the 100% of our service because we thought, okay, it's an essential infrastructure of the city. We need to provide transportation for people that doesn't have a private car or can't move. Um, but then when we realized about the reduction, the sharp reduction in, in, in demand, 
uh, following the transport of first indication is when we, we adapted all the service. So um, basically we followed the data coming from our even, I mean, our regular ticketing services. I mean, it, it's it's something on, in real time. So we get information at once, uh, us as a public transport operator, but also the transport authority. And, and we saw that there was no demand. So uh, basically we just adapted following these, these, these channels. On top mm -hmm. of that, just to sort of contrast or, or have another input, we, we followed other sources. Um, for instance, these um, Google um, uh, coronavirus reports, uh, they, they produce in, in mobility demand uh, from many different cities across the globe to see mm -hmm. that yeah, uh, their figures were, were, or our figures were, were basically. You, you use this, this Google uh, uh, input, right? This, just um, as a contrast. I mean, data. just as an additional source oh. of information, as well as uh, information coming from uh, um, telecommunications uh, companies. Mm -hmm. um, so, but but basically, we follow the, the ticketing. Um, ticketing yeah. uh, May I ask this question? May I bring this question to Budapest? Uh, Mate, did you also use the data provided by Google or by external sources? You combine this with data that you collected internally? We combined uh, this and used it as a, as a um, uh, um, just to back up uh, our, our uh, countings. Uh, basically, we uh, used our colleagues or, or sent our colleagues to the uh, bus stops in the morning rush just to check our uh, timetable modifications and based on these uh, on their uh, experiences we, we did some uh, fine tunings and iteration and uh, finally uh, it, well it was challenging uh, because in Budapest also the demand uh, went down by 90 percent so um, really big Sim change. Yeah, similar as in Madrid. Yeah. Uh, I but think we um, have sorry, sorry? Yes, thank you. May, may I also point something because I forgot Please. to mention it before, because I don't know if that is something slightly different than other of the um, city representatives or people from other cities which are attending this city dialogue. But in Spain, we have had both kind of a lockdown itself, plus mm -hmm. uh, what the government said, uh, an economic hibernation. So that means that within these this, uh, six weeks, we are having this lockdown. There has been 15 days which uh, there has been a, a complete um, stop of everything, so a real hibernation. So there was even no need of transport because basically nobody was allowed. Yeah. Only for essential workers anywhere. like health workers yeah, and supermarkets. So, yes. so since um, uh, this week, for instance, we are checking that demand is increasing slowly. Uh -huh. uh, but compared to last week, for instance, last Monday, the, the demand increased by 7%, for instance. Okay. Okay. We will compare the situation with other uh, uh, colleagues from other cities joining the dialogue. Actually, we have questions from, uh, from colleagues following the dialogue. Ariana? Yes, um, I have two questions that are uh, closely linked to each other. So they they are all uh, are facing uh, the, the the decrease in demand, and uh, the question is, uh, if uh, will do you think that trans public transport will change altogether? How will uh, uh, the day after look like? Is a question for for the two of for, for two of them? Or yes, for, for uh, both speakers. So, uh, Mate, Sergio, how do you see public transport in the near future? Is going to be the same normal? Is going to be a new normal? I I hope. I mean, I wish it would be normal, but I guess it will be kind of a new normal because for sure, in the upcoming months, even if we get get back to normality. Uh, we will have to modify the way uh, we provide the service. For instance, just to keep social distance, we will need to be very strict with the capacity of buses and subways and everything, and that will affect the way we provide the offer and mm -hmm. the way we, we serve. So that's for sure. And that beyond uh, the lack of revenue, which uh, will be quite a, a critical aspect, 
how to how to recover this lack of revenue in the meantime for instance here in that's Africa. indeed an important aspect to also to discuss yeah, uh, yeah. with all expert colleagues uh, the, the revenue issue I, I, I don't know if we will have enough time uh, this afternoon to do this but don't worry if we don't we will have the possibility to organize more specific city dialogues on mobility in the near future uh, let's uh, let's ask uh, Mate if uh, Sergio mentioned that they, they this week they are already seeing a bit more movements compared to the uh, hibernation uh, weeks uh, in the in the past uh, two weeks in uh, Budapest, uh, do you already see an in a low increase of public transport users? Can you already anticipate how the future is going to look like for public transport, Mate? Well, it's really uh, hard to uh, predict what the future will be after this uh, situation, but uh, I think that uh, after uh, people are allowed to go to work again, they will. Got to get back to the public transport and they will use it because that's one of the most effective way and best way to travel in a, in a crowded city. Um, well, in the, in the um, last couple of days, I think uh, it was similar, so uh, there was no rise. I have uh, another question for yes, Laura, if she is still uh, with us, otherwise maybe Sergio can uh, can reply. Uh, Lola mentioned that Madrid has suspended the parking zone. Do you plan to reopen it soon and at what conditions? I don't. I think Lola is maybe Lola is, uh, is already gone. Uh, already left, I guess. Uh, um, so far, uh, there is no uh, scheduled date. For, for bringing it back uh, into duty, the, the regulated parking area. Uh, the main reason for that was to make uh, things easier for people that had to move with their private cars. Um, and um, uh, of course, uh, until we, we keep uh, under this alarm status, which will continue uh, minimum until May 11th, uh, the suspension of the regulated parking area will remain. Thanks, uh, Sergio, for uh, answering the question. Ariana, do we have more questions from... Uh... Just maybe one final one for, uh, for Mate. Uh, I know that you are involved as well in a project called Inclusion, so this question maybe is a uh, matter addressed for you. Um, and we, I have a question on what are the solutions for people with disabilities? I don't know if there are special measures for uh, for people with the, the disabilities currently in place, also well, from Madrid. Um, one of the measures that we implemented is that uh, we opened the doors uh, uh, on, on, on the vehicles, all doors, if possible, whether there is a uh, need to get on and off. Uh, maybe this could help uh, to, uh, for people with disabilities. Uh, to get on and off uh, the buses that one, that comes to my mind now uh. okay thank you yeah in uh, in Madrid um hundred percent of the bus fleet uh, is adapted to people with reduced mobility that means that kneeling system and um, ramps for wheelchairs and that remains the same uh, then a big part of the subway network is also fully available but regarding for instance something which may be of interest is that um, during this lockdown uh, the taxi service in the city of Madrid was reduced and is reduced actually by 50 percent however this uh, reduction does not affect what we call Euro taxis, which are the taxis adapted for wheelchairs. So that the 100% of the fleet is on duty in order to avoid um, these problems with, with people with reduced mobility that need to move uh, through the city. Good to know. Uh, Ariana, do we have more? We still have time, maybe, if there are more questions. We have many, but I think uh, they uh, we will address them uh, later on yeah, because uh, like we that. will also they, there is already talking about the model uh, shift be, from public transport to active modes. So, uh -huh. so I think it's, uh, it's related yeah. to the discussion we will have after. Uh, but indeed, a lot is about uh, also um, revenues and uh, how uh, how can we deal with the, with the, the how public transport operator can deal with the shortage of revenues at the moment. Uh -huh. and I see it's quite a, quite a hot topic uh, from 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 our. I think we right? will have to do another city dialogue specifically on uh, on the day after and how to deal with this. Yeah. 
but yes, I think we can. Uh, uh, I thank everyone for the for the questions. Um, maybe one last question Please. on. Uh, go, go ahead, Adriana. Um, how uh, are your plans to deal after the lockdown with maintaining social distancing or better uh, physical distancing on uh, on buses? Do you plan to increase the the frequency? Well, I think it's still a bit early to know how we are dealing with that. Uh, for sure, we know that we will have to reduce the maximum capacity. Uh, as far as I know, in Spain, EMT was the first uh, bus operator in applying a reduction in the maximum capacity of buses down to seven, more than 75% reduction. So, for instance, in a 12 meters long bus, uh, the maximum amount of people is 10 people. Um, that may be flexibilized anyhow um, after the, the 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 crisis, but we will we will need to keep uh, having a, a reduc reduction uh, in in the capacity. But I don't know really how that will work in terms of increasing frequency. We don't know yet. What I can tell you is that the city is studying at the moment um, how to promote cycling as a safe mode. Uh -huh. uh, part of these uh, uh, measures is the back on duty of the bike sharing system, which uh, actually is starting today. Today, so, yeah. Yeah, after analyzing all the measures for... for we will discuss, uh, Sergio, later about, about active mobility. Uh, let, okay. me, let me uh, bring the question to, to Budapest, uh, if they are already thinking in increasing frequency or any other measure to make sure that people can stay at a safe distance. We are uh, continuously monitoring the usage of the vehicles and uh, based on this we can uh, modify the, the service level. So, uh, but I think uh, the uh, release or, or the uh, coming back to the city will be a longer uh, period, uh, not, not as fast as, as the lockdown for people to come back. Okay. Okay. I see different uh, different approaches. Uh, it's in <coughs> interesting. Sorry uh, to know, uh, Sergio Mate. Thank you very much for your uh, contributions. Uh, please stay with us if you still have time uh, until the end of the dialogue for the other topics. Uh, we have seen um, many. Um, measures and uh, approaches uh, from these uh, two cities from the local level. Uh, here in Brussels, uh, we, we have already uh, do uh, our part. We have done our part, uh, isn't it, Ariana? So indeed, uh, as a network, we joined forces on the initiative of uh, UITP and uh, we sent an, an open letter to the EU institution, uh, which um, stresses how public transport will be heavily affected by the coronavirus um, and which highlights how important it is at this moment for public transport to have access to financial support. So this relates a lot to, to the question also that we received today. Uh, if you want to read the full letter, you can uh, uh, use the QR code on the left side of the screen. You can scan it um, right now and it will be on your phone and you can read it after. Oh, very useful. Thank you, uh, Ariana. And uh, you will keep an eye on the question box, right? Yes. Uh, in case there are some other questions and in the meantime. If yeah. I'm sorry, we cannot reply to to all of them, but uh, please stay with us. We will have time, maybe a bit at the end of the of the city dialogue, to to keep discussing also on uh, on other questions. Yes, and even even if uh, we are not able to bring all the questions into the live dialogue, um, they will be recorded. So we have a log of the questions afterwards, so we can uh, share with uh, with the speakers, and maybe they can address uh, you by email. So don't worry that the inform not information is lost. Uh, in this, uh, using this tool, so so don't worry about uh, missing the opportunity to to address your question. Thank you, Ariana, for keeping an eye. Uh, in, in the meantime, I'm going to uh, stay now in uh, Budapest. Uh, we were talking about uh, model split. Actually, in this city, public transport uh, uh, in Budapest, public transport share 
if the model speed was quite high traditionally. Um, they were also working a lot on uh, the promotion of uh, active uh, active uh, mobility, so uh, cycling and, and walking. And uh, one of the persons uh, behind uh, this uh, idea of uh, increasing the, the model, uh, uh, the share of uh, active mobility in the model split is uh, the vice mayor of uh, Budapest, uh, David uh, Dorosh. Uh, Jana Pot, David. Jana uh, Pot, uh, hi, thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, we have learned that uh, Budapest is establishing uh, temporary bicycle lanes on some important roads to provide uh, your residents with an alternative and safer way to work during this pandemic. Um, I would like to ask you what led you to the decision of implementing these uh, temporary uh, bicycle lanes? Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you again for inviting me to this discussion. So um, just to put you into a bit broader per, uh, context. So we have a new city administration and leadership, uh, which uh, was elected as the result of the last uh, October uh, elections. And uh, we as a new administration uh, have put forward uh, a very a uh, significant greening of the city. So uh, the model uh, shift towards more active uh, mobility and towards uh, greener uh, and more sustainable uh, transportational uh, methods is uh, one of the main pillar of our uh, political agenda. So the plan, the plan was already there. To yeah, the plan was already there. Yes, yeah, so that that was uh, one of the main uh, uh, task of our five-year mandate, and uh, naturally. A lot, of, a lot has changed uh, with the arrival of the corona uh, virus, so we had to uh, make a lot of changes to our uh, already existing plans. But what we have seen in the first couple of weeks of the uh, uh, pandemic was that the occupancy of our public transportation system fell by 80% uh, and the road traffic is down by 60 or 50 percent. So that was the the situation that we had to face. And uh, Budapest has already uh, uh, has an existing uh, a network of bicycle uh, lanes, but mm -hmm. what we decided to do is to build 14 new sections that would uh, continue the already existing uh, uh, networks and link up uh, some of the existing networks and the gaps that were in the in this network. And altogether, we have already started to build uh, uh, 26 kilometers of new uh, bicycle lanes. And one of the reasons why we uh, pushed uh, this initiative was that we have seen that a lot of people who before the pandemic used the public transportation system or used car, they shifted uh, to the using bike. bicycles. And uh -huh. there are a lot of uh, people who are inexperienced uh, uh, using bicycle in uh, a city environment. So we wanted to provide them a safe uh, uh, journey and provide them with a bicycle environment that helps those inexperienced bicycle riders as well. And I'm um, sure, I'm, I'm sure users really appreciate it, David. But uh, it's, it's um, I, I would like to ask you: Is only mm -hmm. about providing the actual lanes, the actual space, or did you also um, think on other measures like uh, offering more um, shared bikes, for example? Yeah, uh, we have uh, uh, quite. Uh, a uh, big uh, bicycle sharing network and we um, uh, essentially made it free so uh, now uh, people can use this uh, bicycle sharing network uh, for free and as a result after introducing this uh, free usage uh, the usage of uh, this network increased by 20%. And uh, I was wondering, in these times, in this uh, during this health crisis, w was it very difficult to implement these measures or to collect some data to see if, if they are um, well received by the citizens, if um, if they they will last? Uh, um, do you have a strategy to monitor to collect data on these new bike lanes, for example? 
Yeah, so we have uh, um, a wide range of uh, data collection uh, devices uh, uh, all around the city, and we are uh, collecting and analyzing the data on on a daily basis. And uh, we will uh, decide whether to uh, make uh, uh, or implement new measures based on those data. So we are data driven in our decision making. As a city leader, David, do you see this uh, crisis um, as an opportunity to change uh, something, to change people's behavior? Yes, um, but I think uh, all crises are opportunities in some way, but uh, we are collecting and analyzing uh, international examples and uh, data coming from uh, other cities and what we have seen for instance uh, some data coming from china where in some parts uh, the quarantine has already been lifted that people are less uh, prone to to get back uh, to the public transportation system and in some regions uh, we have uh, seen that the new uh, uh, purchases uh, of cars have uh, risen dem dramatically and we are concerned and we are uh, uh, preparing with a uh, very strong uh, public relations campaign to uh, uh, make people uh, when it's safe uh, I have to uh, emphasize this to come back and use public transportation again. I, ga I guess you gave us one of the key uh, aspects as well is uh, this communicating uh, these measures and the new situation to to people. And this is, this was one of the main questions that we had when we organized this city dialogue. Uh, it's and I think it's one of the questions most of uh, us we have these days. Is it possible to promote active mobility to promote to to tell people uh, walk? And, and cycle while people have to stay at home or they have some fears, how to address fears, it's, uh, it's a real challenge as well. Yes, I think it's um, a common responsibility for us uh, working in uh, and working for sustainable uh, 21st century cities uh, to use every uh, channel and digital channels to reach out to the general public. And we, for instance, uh, uh, are putting great emphasis on uh, digital uh, channels like Facebook, like Instagram, like uh, Twitter. And uh, we also have a mobile application that uh, is uh, on uh, almost uh, everybody's uh, mobile phone who is using public transportation in Budapest, so we have a direct channel to the people. Indeed, uh, uh, communication uh, channels are very important. Going back to the to the actual uh, uh, measure, the, 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 the uh, infrastructure measure about the bike lanes uh, that you uh, installed temporarily, are they going to remain after the lockdown? Uh, there are some lanes that we uh, created now that uh, are permanent because they were part of our uh, long-term uh, bicycle infrastructure uh, plans. And there are some that uh, we see right now that uh, we need further data and we uh, we to decide whether they will stay in place or not. Uh -huh. Okay. You were uh, mentioning before that you are also looking uh, at examples from uh, from other cities, uh, even from other countries like China. Uh, together with us today, there are plenty of other cities. I don't know, Ariana, if there are some questions uh, for the uh, deputy mayor uh, about this uh, concrete measure or about uh, more general plans for the future. Uh, uh, we have a, a key question uh, asking, uh, will the bike lanes remain after? the crisis is over yeah we, we already we already addressed this question right now i just uh, ask it my, myself i don't know if uh, you want to complete something more on this uh, lasting aspect of the measure uh, david do you want to say something oh. more? Uh, as somebody who is responsible for climate protection and uh, somebody who is coming from a green uh, city administration, we as an um, administration prefer uh, strengthening bicycle infrastructure and uh, we would like to promote uh, bicycle usage uh, uh, among the general uh, public. So I will do everything in my power to be able to move forward in those uh, territories.
Thank you. Maybe Thank you one much. last uh, question, uh, also related to how to communicate about uh, this with uh, with the public. Um, they are asking if uh, any city is promoting uh, health and uh, as well as environmental benefit together with uh, the measure itself, and uh, uh, maybe it could be the start of a new narrative. Yes, I think uh, this whole crisis is uh, very important that uh, in that respect that what we have seen among uh, uh, people here living in Budapest that uh, it transforms uh, their thinking about uh, mobility and uh, about uh, the city in general and uh, we still haven't, we do not have uh, uh, hard data on that, but we will have some focus groups, uh, online focus groups and uh, surveys to, to test how the shift, the mental shift, how people think about uh, urban mobility uh, has changed. But uh, what we have seen until now from anecdotal evidence is that there is a huge shift. So in that respect, I think uh, local municipalities could and should be brave uh, to move forward uh, in, with sustainable and green solutions because there is an opening for that uh, among the people right now. Thank you very much for, for your answers, uh, David. Uh, Ariana, any more questions for uh, David or can we move to the next uh, question from our side? I think we can move also because we will have a full discussion on active mobility soon, so we can use those Perfect. questions later on. So let, let me tell, thank you very much, David. Thank you very much, I appreciate. Thank you thank very you. much. And uh, now, Ariana, I think um, you have a question uh, for, for our audience, for people joining the AC Dialogue, right? Yes, I do. So uh, I would like to ask, uh, is active mobility, cycling and walking currently promoted in your city? You can see the poll on your screen and you can already uh, vote. Um, the replies are, yes, our city has a plan for promotion of active modes during and after the lockdown. Yes, we are putting in place a special measure, temporary bike lanes and widening sidewalks. We are thinking of implementing special measures and so far no initiative have been taken regarding active mobility. Okay, the uh, answers are coming. It's quite balanced uh, for this question. Is active mobility, cycling and walking currently promoted in your city? So let us know. So far, 30 people gave an answer. And uh, Ariana, I think we are not going to uh, analyze these results now, but later, right? You are going to keep them for the moment. Yes, I will keep them and uh, uh, I will give the chance to keep voting also after the next speaker so we can have a, a discussion afterwards. Okay, perfect. So uh, you will have a second chance to complete or to even change uh, your mind, to change uh, uh, your answer. But now we are going to uh, travel uh, to Vienna. Uh, we are going to talk with uh, Alexander Scholz. He's a mobility expert at the city of Vienna. Uh, guten Tag. Good afternoon, Alexander. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much uh, for joining us this afternoon in this city dialogue. Um, I have um, a question for, for you. Um, we learned that uh, a recent uh, change in the federal law at, uh, in Austria um, helped you to create new walking streets on top of what you already have done in, in the past. Can you please tell us a bit more about this uh, walking street? Hmm. So, um, um, in Vienna we have uh, two measures to promote uh, walking. Uh, in the city of Vienna. So the federal government passed a law that uh, there is a rule to keep uh, one distance um, away from other people, the physical distancing in public spaces, shop and public transport. Um, but we know that the, some of the sidewalks, uh, sidewalks of Vienna, or a lot of them are quite narrow. So that to apply the one meter rule uh, in some um, parts of city of Vienna is quite hard. So we introduced uh, temporary shared spaces. Um, temporary shared spaces were already um, possible to introduce before the coronavirus uh, crisis. 
So these are like shared spaces, like the, um, let's say normal shared spaces that we have, but there are no like structural changes. And um, the other thing is that the federal government passed a new regulation in our traffic, road traffic uh, regulations, yes. so mm -hmm. that people are allowed to walk on the street because before that, uh, people were not allowed to walk on the street only to cross it. And to be allowed to walk on the street, the street has to be closed for general car traffic. So these are the two two main main uh, temporary uh, measures we implemented in Vienna. Do you have already any feedback from people on these um, temporary measures that you implemented? Hmm. At the moment, I think there will be uh, ev ev evaluation, um, but um, there is no like no no big feedback from it right now but um, mm -hmm. as you can see on the pictures um, there are there is a demand for it and uh, if the weather is good people will use it but um, as you can see also there are still a lot of cars parked cars so maybe the mm -hmm. road if there is no structural changes the the, the 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 road will not be like it's still seen for cars so there has to be a, a change in the mindset of people and uh, this is going to be a process. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Uh, let me remind uh, everyone in the call uh, that if you want to ask a question to Alexander, if you want to uh, comment something on active mobility, on promoting walking and cycling uh, during this uh, health crisis and how to expand sidewalks or how to create temporary or more permanent spaces, you just can drop a line, uh, write a question in the, in the question box, and Diana will uh, come with, uh, with some questions. I have um, a, a question yes, uh, for Alexander. What proportion of roads were shut down in Vienna to prioritize pedestrians? Okay, so um, like I said, there is this two, two types. So we have the shared space, the temporary ones. At the moment, I think there are eight or nine, there are going to be more in Vienna. I think um, our vice mayor introduced some more, announced some more today. And there are around 20 closed streets where I can walk legally on the on the street now as a pedestrian. But these road, uh, roads have been um, closed for, for, for the for general car traffic before the crisis already. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, w for these uh, um, eight streets that you mentioned, and um, more to come, that are closed or shared temporarily, uh, what, what is the approach? I mean, how do, you how do you identify this street and not any other street? Do you have a specific approach? Yeah. So these this streets were based on where there's a high um, density population and uh, not a lot of access to green spaces or public spaces, and also where the, the sidewalks are narrow. So, yeah, these are, are the main two focuses we have, population density and uh, the narrow of um, the, the narrow length of the, of the width of the sidewalks. What does it mean narrow in, in Austria? So, uh, under two meter. Mm. Okay. So, we have in, in, in Vienna, the, there is this general rule, uh, sidewalk has to be at least two meters. And, um, yeah, if it's under two meter, it's narrow. Ariana, do you, have, do you have more questions from uh, colleagues uh, on active mobility? Someone is wondering if there is a map showing uh, the closed street. Yes, there is a map. Okay, so I, Celine, I can, we can, can probably share it with you afterwards. And uh, do you have uh, opposition or protest against uh, the implementation of pedestrian zones? Mm, well, uh, first of all, there's no, they are not pedestrian zones. There are shared spaces, so the it's so 20 uh, kilometers. Uh, 20 to... kilometers, no, is the limit, the speed Sorry? limit. Yeah, 20 kilometers per hour for car traffic. So in pedestrian zones, there is no car traffic allowed, but in the shared spaces, there's also car traffic allowed. Um, protest, I wouldn't say there are protests, but yeah, it's um, controversially discussed. That's, that's, that's true. And the, con and the contrary, uh, Alexander, in the, the contrary of protests, uh, some, some people, some neighbors are, are requesting, actually, to have a, a share space in their streets where they yes, live? Yes, of course. Um, but this was already before the crisis and now. So, like shared spaces, um, uh, we have uh, more and more shared spaces in Vienna. We introduced another one this year. Um, 
and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a quite good concept. I mean, Marihilfa Straße, if, if somebody knows, it's a very famous big um, shared space and also pedestrian zone. So um, yeah, it gains popularity, the, the shared spaces. Good to know. Um, we are soon, go it's going to be soon half past three here in Brussels, uh, half past two in Lisbon, if someone is joining from Lisbon, and uh, half past four in Athens. Uh, live, uh, live dialogue across Europe. And I would like to go back to the um, uh, to the poll that we just launched before uh, talking to you, Alexander. Alexander, please uh, stay with us if you don't mind. Maybe we can uh, also discuss uh, together the the, the, the answers uh, of uh, our colleagues from other European cities. Ariana, can we already see the the answers? Yes, right. Yes, and uh, I, I saw some people couldn't see the the question poll before. I hope now is is uh, more visible and uh, everyone can uh, reply. Um, but yeah, we can see that 22% uh, 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 have uh, the spe some special uh, measure in place. Um, and 25% uh, are thinking of implementing special measures. So I would like to uh, to ask that to those that replied that there are special measures in places, if uh, you can write in the in the chat box um, what they are, or if you want to speak, you can. We can. Uh, if you tell us your name, we can unmute you, and you can tell us a bit more about it. Yes, of course, we didn't mention it, Ariana, but uh, I mean, there is no possibility to raise your hand uh, using this uh, uh, tool, uh, Skype for Business, business sorry. but uh, of course, you can uh, just uh, drop a line saying like, I would like to intervene, and then uh, you, you can also participate lively in the, in the dialogue if you want to explain a bit more your answer, as Ariana said. If so wants to I am going to read the results, uh, so that uh, also the one that cannot see it. So the first answer, yes, our city has a plan for promotion of active modes during and after the loca lockdown received 21%. So also this, I mean, we will hear some more from Milan shortly on uh, what uh, what plan do they have for promoting active mobility. 21% have special measures in place, 24 are thinking about having special places, and 35% don't have any initiative, uh, initiative being taken yet. Okay, we will uh, uh, take this. Uh, Alexander, are you still there? Yeah, sure. Um, can, can I ask you, um, are you surprised with the results? They are quite balanced, actually, the four answers. Uh, do you have a first impression of these results? Mm, I mean, uh, it, it has to be, everything has to be very fast. And like, if I can talk from Vienna, the implementation of the of the shared spaces is not so easy because of um, also you have to speak with the politicians of the districts. Uh -huh. So it, we are still uh, a democratic uh, society, and so therefore sometimes some measures will take some time, even in the crises. So um, yeah, for me, it's I, th I can and I think it's also very different from the cities. More some cities have more pressure on the public spaces. But maybe some cities have more wider, uh, wider sidewalks and more public spaces, so they don't feel the pressure to to implement measures. So I think this is for me like a well-based. Um, um, yes, I guess uh, poll, it's, 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 it depends also also on the culture, on the tradition that you have been building up uh, during the past uh, to implement these measures with. <laughs> more easily or more challenging, right? But uh, as uh, as uh, we discussed before with the Vice Mayor, Deputy Mayor of uh, Budapest, but we are um, all, uh, every European city is in a crisis right now. We are in a health crisis uh, that will be followed, uh, if not already started by other kind of uh, crisis. And um, yeah, many people, they see crisis as an opportunity to, uh, for Maybe. a change. Uh, I can uh, ask one question, Please, uh, either to um, Alexander or if uh, Mate is still with us, also to him. Um, how do you limit the risk of contamination by using shared bike? I don't know if uh, uh, Mate or Alexander want I to. Think Mate, Alexander, or even Sergio uh, from Madrid can also um, give since, an answer. Yes, since you are reopening the, your bike sharing system today, Sergio, 
how are you planning on uh, limiting the contamination by use shared bike and I would also add uh, shared vehicles in general uh, in, in, in the case of Madrid um, we disinfect uh, the whole fleet every day and also all the areas of the of the um, stations which are touchable by people either the docks or the, the touchpad and the screen uh, and uh, it is mandatory to use gloves when using them is okay. it, sorry Sergio, it's mandatory to use what sorry gloves, gloves. Oh, okay okay yeah gloves. okay yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, are they provided uh, by the company? No, they have to. Um, they, no, they don't provide no. any. You okay. have to bring your own. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ariana. In, yes. In, yes. And you asked also about shared mobility, but I don't know if that is part of the last uh, block. <laughs> yes, but we are flexible. Uh, well, or I can I can wait. No, okay. No worry. Okay. Um, perfect. Another question, maybe also interesting, uh, if are the bike, uh, the new bike lanes, the temporary bike lanes, uh, segregated, and how have been they designed to avoid conflicts at junctions? I don't know. This is a question for Mate uh, in Budapest. Uh, or... Yes, if uh, if David is no longer with us, maybe Mate. They are not hello. Uh, they are not segregate, segregated. Uh, we put on uh, the regular signs to uh, show car drivers that uh, there's some change here. These uh, temporary signs are uh, yellow, so they are different, uh, more visible than the regular signs. Mm, but the temporary the bike lanes are are just painted mainly. I think we can see something uh, on the screen right now. It's uh, the one that you are describing, this one. Yes. Okay. And uh, just uh, to get back uh, uh, to the shared bikes, we mm -hmm. also clean our bikes regularly and the uh, docking uh, station and terminals as well. And we recommend the users to use uh, gloves and also to clean the handles before and after they use the bikes. How, how regularly do you clean them? Once a day or, or more or less? Uh, I think once a day. Uh -huh. Okay. Did you also reduce uh, the, the fleet? I don't know if you mentioned it before. No, no, we did not reduce the fleet. We have the bike sharing uh, in full capacity, more than 2,000 bikes on the streets. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Mate, for your answers. Ariana, are there, are there more questions about active mobility or shall we move uh, for the last part of the city dialogue? I think we can uh, move to the last part. Okay, Sergio still uh, had something to say about uh, um, share mobility, about the share vehicles, how to clean them. Uh, we talk already about the bikes, the share bikes. But now let's talk about uh, the urban vehicle access uh, regulations uh, or UVARS. Uh, low emission zones and also share mobility where it's actually like two topics uh, merge into into one we still have 30 minutes to discuss these issues and um, to do this we are going to uh, travel uh, to Milan uh, buongiorno Valentino uh, good afternoon good afternoon everybody and uh, thank you Ariane and Juan for the invitation and for the opportunity thank you Thanks to you for accepting the, this invitation to, 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 to be with us today. Um, Valentino, yesterday we saw an article uh, in, uh, in The Guardian, actually, uh, about the ambitious plans that uh, your city has uh, to reduce uh, car use after, after lockdown. Um, can you maybe please tell us a bit more about this? It's, uh, this image that we can see is related also to this uh, to this combination of temporary measures and more long-term vision? Yeah, uh, we worked uh, a lot during this uh, lockdown in relation to this uh, new plan. This uh, new plan for the post-COVID-19 is called uh, Strade Aperte, uh, Open Streets. Um, and uh, he's starting uh, the, the most uh, important aspect in relation to this aspect is uh, to respect the social distance. Mm -hmm. 
During uh, uh, the first uh, aspect uh, in relation to the plan, in relation to the plan, uh, the first aspect is uh, the public transport uh, with uh, the rules uh, that ask the passenger have uh, to travel seat one meter of distance between each uh, passenger. Uh, the the capacity will uh, will be 10 or 30 percent of their normal capacity. So, uh, in order to give the possibility to the citizens to move uh, around the city, we are working in this uh, plan in order to um, to give the possibility to, to the 70 percent of the people that don't find place in the public transport to move uh, around the city. Our uh, our plan preview to create uh, specific um, specific uh, uh, path for uh, for bike uh, emergency emergency uh, lanes for bike and uh, we preview to enlarge the pedestrian site exactly as you can see in this picture on the left you can see uh, Corso Buenos Aires is uh, the most important uh, uh, commercial street in Milan. is uh, two kilometers long. This uh, this street, and uh, you know, on the right uh, you can see um, the project uh, that we are working to do now uh, uh -huh. in order to, when to is be. This, your, when is the pro project starting? Uh, yeah, uh, this project is uh, is uh, they are working in those days, and uh, we we would like to be ready with uh, with uh, uh, different uh, emergency lines in uh, for the four fourth of May when we reopen the city. Okay, okay, so it's uh, it's already a strategy for the day after, right? Or, or the yeah. smoothly smoothly day after, uh, step by step. Uh, step by step, Indeed. step by step, yeah, yes. And um, uh, Valentino, um, in uh, Milan there are two uh, urban vehicle access regulation or areas or low emission zones, uh, right? It's the uh, area G, area B, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yeah. And um, you decided to um, suspend the, these two areas uh, during the, the health crisis. And um, it will be like this until the 3rd of May. Uh, can you please tell us what was the purpose of uh, taking this measure? Why did you suspend the, the low emission zone? Yeah, uh, we suspended the low emission zone and the congestion charge. So in Milan, we have uh, the, the congestion charge in very inner part of the city and a more larger um, um, ring uh, where we have the low emission zone. We okay, suspended both. during this uh, this uh, period. Uh, we suspended both uh, the um, the limited traffic zone uh, in order to facilitate uh, the emergency, the the people working the sanitary uh, aspect uh, to move around the around the, the city. Uh, we expect uh, during the post COVID. Uh, that the private traffic will increase uh, because uh, for two different uh, aspects. Before, because uh, uh, 70 percent of the people normally use public transport will don't find a place inside the public transport and secondary because uh, uh, different people probably uh, will be scored to use public transport so uh, probably during the very very first period uh, the private traffic will increase uh, our uh, our um, policy is uh, to be soft during the first moment uh, in relation to this uh, specific aspect, but we are working in order to create more opportunity to the people to leave their car at home and to change modality, uh, not only in relation to the to the private cars, but using a bike, using uh, travel by walk for the short distance, uh, because uh, more or less uh, two or oh, two kilometer you can you can do by by foot uh, for an half hour or uh, an half hour you can bike uh, and in a half an hour a half hour you can 
uh, run for more or less uh, six or seven kilometers uh -huh. with, with uh, your bike. So your plan is even to um, enlarge the, the existing um, congestion charge and low emission zones? When... Uh, no, uh, we, um, no the, the scheme remains the same. The same. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, probably uh, after the COVID, for the short moment, for short time, uh, we suspend uh, uh, as well uh, Area C and uh, uh, Area B. Uh -huh. But we are studying this uh, specific aspect. We have uh, one question, Ariana. Yes, um, I would like to ask you, uh, are you thinking in encouraging and promoting work from home to reduce mobility needs yeah. or to make more flexible timetables to reduce peak hour effect? Yeah, uh, we have a different strategy in relation to this specific aspect in our plan. Uh, the first aspect is uh, to encourage uh, the, the company to maintain at home uh, uh, a percent of uh, their workers uh, in smart working uh, during the days. And uh, another aspect is uh, we are working with a mobility manager. In Italy, we have a specific uh, law uh, where all, com all the most uh, big company with uh, 300 uh, workers are obliged to have a mobility manager. We are working in this day, in those days, we are working with them in order to, to find a solution and in order to organize uh, uh, the number of people working uh, every day in, uh, in, uh, in smart working. And we are working uh, in relation to change the time of the city in order to desynchronize the time in relation to, to, the, to the workers, uh, in order to define specific time for specific workers, for, for instance, uh, specific time for, for the shop, specific time for the goods, for, for instance, and uh, in order to, um, to distribute to distribute the the travel uh, and, and to, to reduce avoid crowds. The, uh, yeah, uh, to reduce the peak hour. Yeah, indeed, indeed. It's a yeah, it's a very interesting question, Ariana, and it also makes me think that maybe everyone uh, joining today this dialogue can think if uh, uh, you, we, uh, as a, as mobility experts in our respective cities, uh, do we have a role to advocate for more teleworking uh, when we go back to normal or to new normal? Because uh, teleworking is a measure that is not only related or not only dependent, depending on mobility departments of uh, city administration. Of course, there are much more um, um, authorities involved. Ariana, do we have uh, more questions? Yes, many. Uh, I will start with something on the bicycle, uh, on the bike lanes. Um, uh, Valentino, are these temporary measures also, uh, are these temporary or structural measures? And uh, uh, was the bike lane a decision of the city council or was the administration? Uh, in this in this moment uh, they are uh, they are temporary, but uh, we hope uh, they became uh, uh, structural. And uh, uh, this uh, specific plan uh, is uh, made directly by the administration. And Ariana, more questions for Valentino? Yes, there is a broad question on uh, uh, both Uber and public transport. Um, so I'm going to read it. Uh, revenues from parking and Ubers are a valid source of revenues, especially in this crisis. So which um, on the cities that have uh, the regulated parking and Ubers, uh, are you planning on opening it soon? So this is a question both for Valentino and for other cities that have uh, uh, regulated parking on street and Ubers. Um, so yes, this is, uh, this is the questions. Are you in, planning uh, the, to restore the normality soon? No, in uh, in the very short uh, time uh, we we stay with uh, the free parking for all exactly like the congestion charge and uh, after some uh, some uh, some pre different uh, weeks or months we 
uh, will probably change. But in our plan, we have the first two is uh, between now and September, and the first three start in September, because in this moment, the school and university doesn't open, but they reopen in September. Does someone else uh, from the pool of speakers or even from any other city, people joining us this afternoon, do you want to reply to, to answer to this question as well? It was a bit added to everyone. How do you plan to compensate this uh, loss in revenues from uh, parking places? So we have uh, Martin from Graz that is uh, telling us that the on-street parking is not regulated at the moment but will be restored in May. Uh, Vienna will introduce short time parking on 17 of, uh, I don't know if it was April already or if it will be uh, May. Uh, in Rome is more or less the same, uh, sorry, okay, it was 27 of April for Vienna. Um, and then we have a question from our colleague Peter. Many of the measures presented are addressing inner city traffic and public space management. Are there any specific plans to manage, for example, commuter traffic coming from outside the city? I guess this is a question mainly from uh, for Valentino, being Milan a city with a lot of commuters. Uh, can you repeat the, the question because I lost the question? How, uh, if you have specific plan to address the commuters problem? Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we we are working uh, with the, the regional railway in order to organize uh, and to book the train for the for the commuter, and uh, uh, this is uh, another aspect. And uh, uh, another aspect is uh, uh, to to. Um, push a lot in relation to the smart working uh, in order to uh, start uh, on the beginner in relation to the people that uh, um, coming in Milan every day from far. I have uh, actually um, good news for you, Valentino, and uh, yeah, for looking at the future, 2021 actually has been declared as the European Year of Railways, so maybe there will be a momentum as well to promote uh, uh, train commuting, especially in um, big metropolitan areas where you can work with the regional administration um, to promote the train, actually, to reach the, the city. Ariana, do we have more questions for Valentino on uh, this uh, UBARS aspect or the promotion of active mobility, or shall we move to the to the last part? Uh, Maybe on uh, one last question uh, on uh, um, public transport. Do you want to regulate using buses and trams uh, so that everyone wearing a mask can use public transport? We didn't address this topic yet, so. I think both uh, Valentino and uh, Sergio and Mate can uh, can tell us what is the approach. Mm -hmm. Is it only going to be physical distancing or are you looking into the possibility of allowing uh, people with masks to use uh, public transport? Uh, using, we, um, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, the number of people using public transport we reduce a lot, 10, 30 percent, and uh, the people using uh, public transport is mandatory to use glove and mask. Uh -huh. But I guess it's not only to use public transport; it's for any other activity outside, right? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's exactly. not going to be very challenging for for, yeah. for public yeah. transport operators. It's not going to be very challenging for public transport operators to uh, ask people to wear gloves and masks, but how are you going to make sure that mm, there is a maximum capacity per vehicle, per bus? I mean, is the bus driver uh, counting the heads, or how are you...? Yeah, in relation to the surface, uh, surface network is uh, the driver, and in relation to the underground, uh, we are working to create uh, um, um, platooning uh, uh, number of people can enter inside the station. 
uh, they uh, will ask, uh, will uh, stay um, outside the station and uh, uh, they enter in uh, uh, 200 people each uh, each uh, for instance uh, each time inside inside of the station and there is an automatically modality we already use for the San Siro Stadium. Ah, okay, so it's a, it's a system that you already tested before. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Maybe some other cities are also interested in knowing the city, um, uh, the city system, sorry. Um, Ariana, um, shall we continue with share mobility? Uh, before we, 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 we jump to share mobility, yes. this is Sergio. Uh, yes, Sergio. Uh, addressing some of the questions on, uh, you, you have. Uh, uh, raised to, to other cities. Uh, I guess from uh, somebody asked uh, about uh, if Madrid um, uh, had done something about Madrid Central, so the low emission zone. Uh, mm -hmm. The low emission zone remains up and active because that it's on, only related to the, 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 the oldest vehicles which uh, already were affected before the crisis, so the, the, the low emission zone remains active. However, in terms of the regulated parking scheme, I just got information from uh, Lola, uh, from the director from the City Council, and the idea of the City Council is to uh, bring back the regulated parking scheme uh, in a progressive way starting in May the 9th, probably. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and, and then relate, related to the, the masks, and um, the use of the mask, the mandatory use of the mask in public transport. Uh, we are just um, uh, following the indications coming from the health authorities, both at the regional and at the national level. So we will follow all the indications from, from them. But it seems to be quite likely that it will be mandatory. And about the capacity, uh, Sergio? Do and you the have capacity a... will be controlled by the bus driver, at least the, the, what I know in terms of buses, which is my, my field. Uh, is the bus driver the one that controls the capacity? It's easy to count up to 10 people. Uh, then on the subway or trains, I guess there will be some sort of inspections and, and, and people taking care of that. Okay, thanks for letting us uh, know. Sorry, sorry, yes. I'm Valentino. The problem for us is uh, to inform people that uh, in each station or in each stop, bus stop, there are uh, different people waiting uh, the public the the bus or the underground train and we are working with an app in order to uh, to have information how many people they are waiting uh, uh, the the public transport uh, in order to decide if uh, you want to stay uh, to go at a stop to waiting the bus or uh, choice to go by walk or uh, by by car or to take a shared bicycle yeah, or for to example take, or to take a shared bike or a scooter or kick scooter as well and uh, this makes me think actually valentino that milan has been uh, one of the best cases in in europe when it's when we are talking about uh, share mobility uh, you had um, several um, uh, mobility uh, share mobility providers for for cars for electric cars for uh, bikes as we can see uh, in the image uh, also motorbikes um, I'm, I'm wondering um, if uh, this uh, share vehicles share mobility system are still running um, do you have a good cooperation with partnership with these uh, providers so how do they see the situation in the future yeah, uh, we have a very, very good uh, relationship with uh, all the the company manager the share mobility in Milan. Uh, during this uh, period, uh, we started with a specific monitoring in relation to the whole uh, mobility system, and uh, with specifically with uh, the share mobility, they send us every day. The, the data in relation to the use of the of the system. In this period, uh, the shared mobility worked uh, during all the the, the period, and uh, some uh, some company close uh, the the service, but three company only in relation to the all uh, the shared mobility panorama. And uh, we expect that this uh, this specific system. Uh, will uh, uh, increase uh, after the lockdown uh, in order to support uh, the public transport and in order to 
uh, avoid the use uh, of the uh, private car. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Do you, uh, Valentino, have uh, some data about the use of these shared vehicles these days? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if uh, it's possible to share, I can share. Yes, please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so uh, in relation, uh, uh, we started with uh, this uh, specific monitoring uh, from the first week uh, where we had the pandemic uh, uh, crisis alarm, 22 of February, and uh, in relation to the sharing mobility. Uh, we have uh, this uh, specific situation, this is uh, the car sharing, this is during the first week, and uh, this is uh, the situation during the last week. This is uh, the situation during the first week. In blue you can see the, the normal situation, in yellow the situation registered in each day. And this is uh, the second week, this is the third week, and this is uh, uh, last week. This information is uh, public so far or is going to be published? Uh, I can share this uh, specific document, but uh, probably next week uh, we will uh, publish uh, a specific uh, internet uh, um, site uh, with all, uh, all the data. Okay, so uh, I guess uh, other colleagues will be curious also yeah. to know this, this information. Valentino, thank you very much. Uh, Ariana, do we have more questions from uh, our colleagues, from, from the audience? Uh, Peter is asking, uh, he's curious to know other cities' opinion regarding the impact of COVID on uh, ride sharing and taxi services. Um, I don't know if uh, someone wants to uh, join in. But indeed, this, uh, this um, tool that Valentino showed us, I think it would be a great addition to our COVID news uh, uh, website. It can be a useful tool also to study how uh, is impacting uh, the mobility, not just uh, with public transport, but also with, uh, with all the sharing system. Uh, yeah, I remember... Uh, yeah, in, relation, in relation to the data, we have uh, the data in relation to the taxi use uh, because uh, we control the taxi with uh, the camera we have in the congestion charge, so we have the data in relation to the taxi as well. Okay, great. Uh, I remember that Sergio wanted to mention something on share mobility, on cleaning of shared vehicles. Uh, Sergio, uh, could you like to join now? Uh, yeah, to... well, it's more about uh, the overall situation of share mobility services. Uh -huh. um, so, um, BCMAT, the bike sharing system, was stopped by March 16, and today is back on duty. But then for e-scooter companies, e-scooter sharing companies, the city also in March 16th revoked the licenses so the the companies removed all the service from the street it was and a temporary it was temporary temporary yes. yeah okay. and and then uh, in the case of moped sharing motor motor motorcycle sharing and car sharing it, it was uh, it was more on a voluntary basis so most of them kept all the services up and running at the very beginning but then progressively they 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 were just uh, stopping the service until April the first. It's when the last company that already had uh, vehicles in the street uh, decided to stop because the demand was really low. So in in between, in the meantime, uh, they they apply different cleaning and disinfection and procedures to maintain safety and to keep safety conditions. But at the very end, uh, they decided to stop. So virtually at the moment. Uh, in Madrid, there are no shared mobility services, just a oh. station-based company, but also with modified procedures. So you need two hours in advance to book the car, so they have time enough to clean in and, and ensure uh -huh. safety. So. Uh, I see. I see. There is no deadline to change the system, I guess, or uh, this exceptional situation. I mean, it's all linked to the, to the alarm status okay. of the company, which affects nationwide. So until May the 9th, uh, May the 11th, I don't remember the exact date, uh, I guess the situation will not change at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Sergio, for this update. Um, Ariana, um, do we have a question from our audience, or do we have questions from the audience before we <coughs> get to um, our end? We uh, just uh, maybe a, more of a remark uh, on, uh, on working uh, behaviours. 
Uh, I think for now the the data that we have uh, since the strict enforcement of the of the rules is that uh, everybody is working from home. But um, yes, it would be interesting on a second phase to see how many of the company that uh, managed and did it, how many will take up on this uh, flexible working and uh, home working, smart working, and so on. So I think it's a question more for the future. Yeah, indeed. Well, we take note as well. Uh, and Ariana, if you want to maybe uh, ask one last uh, question using the, the live uh, uh, poll uh, tool with our uh, colleagues joining us today. Yes. It might be useful for us to ask you this question. So um, I would like to thank you everyone for joining, first of all, and ask you one last question on uh, uh, how useful did you find this city dialogue? Uh, very useful. I'm interested in joining the next one. Uh, useful. I like sharing knowledge in this format. Useful, but I would prefer a different format. Not useful. No new information was provided or I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, answers are coming. Answers are coming. Oh, I yeah. have uh, um, uh, some other comments, reading it now. Um, yes, well, it's already four o'clock. Um, yes, also... but uh, there yeah, are yeah. some, uh, maybe we can take a few minutes just because we started with a bit of delay. If um, you are not in a rush, we can, think, uh, we can, we can be flexible or we can stay two more minutes. There are course. already suggestions on, uh, on uh, what the next city dialogue could be about. Um, there, on the mobility data, on uh, during and after the lockdown. I think another big topic that we need to address it will be on uh, how to deal with the with the less uh, fare for public transport um, and as well uh, from the revenues from parking and low emission zones so i think one we have a system for if you want to suggest the topic for the next uh, city dialogue yes indeed uh, we do of course as i said before when we started the dialogue and i show all the faces of the whole euro cities mobility team working here in brussels you can contact us at any time. It's not only because we are working from home now or because we are in this exceptional situation. We are a big team, as I said, with different responsibilities, different profiles, and we, can, we speak different languages. So uh, you can always contact us to suggest any kind of activity. We will continue organizing these uh, city dialogues, not only on mobility, but also on, uh, you can share with your colleagues from other city departments, also on other topics. Uh, and uh, all the information, uh, it's uh, available in a platform, in a dedicated platform uh, that uh, uh, we have created, not only for mobility purposes, of course. It's a COVID news. You can uh, visit this platform. It's updated regularly. Every day you can find around 10, 15 new entries coming from you, from uh, Eurocities members, examples. COVID news that Eurocities.eu. I'm sure you already know this platform, but please don't hesitate to follow. You can also follow the information on Twitter, on following our Twitter account. And if you have any suggestion, you want to showcase your own examples, or you want to propose to organize a specific city dialogue on mobility, like for example, revenues or data, or in, even other topics, you can drop an email to covidnews at Eurocities.eu. We will take note and we will organize uh, one more city dialogue. Is there any other business or any other questions uh, from uh, my colleagues or from uh, anyone joining in the call? Don't be shy. You can unmute yourself and you can say something if you feel... We are receiving a lot of happy comments, which makes me very happy. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Much. Thank you. I would especially like to thank uh, our speakers as well, uh, because they, they really uh, invest their time. I know you are super busy these days in your administrations. You have to work on many different things, and still you, you have the time to have a chat with us before this call to prepare everything. I hope it worked for you. Um, so thank you very much for, to, to all our speakers as well, and to our colleagues. As I said before, this is a joint effort, and this is only one city dialogue that is part of a series of city dialogues that Eurocities is organizing during these days that we have to work from home, but uh, if it's successful, we will keep this format for the future, I'm afraid. 
Ariana? Yes. Anything else? No, I think we can close it here. Uh, once again, thank you. Keep following us and uh, let's stay in touch. Thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all to all the speakers. Thank you so much. Thank you all to all the speakers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you as well. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye.